So you heard of FMEA, Failure Mode Effect Analysis, and you're wondering what the heck is it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you what exactly is FMEA and give you an example so you can understand it. And if you need help building the right skills and knowledge around projects, particularly if you're gonna be using FMEA, then I have something covered for you that is really cool. It's a free webinar, and the link to this free webinar is under this video, so definitely go check it out. FMEA Background. FMEA stands for Failure Mode Effect Analysis. It comes from the manufacturing industry where it's heavily used and it can be really helpful for project managers or anyone in projects to really analyze what are the potential risks. It is a tool to help you with risk management. Now there's many risk management tools out there. I personally like to use a risk mitigation planning tool that I actually have in Slay Project Management, which is slightly different than an MFE, M, a FMEA, which is very spreadsheet oriented, but that's okay because I've used both. And it really is going to be dependent upon the risks that you're collecting and the information that you want to analyze. Now on that note, I actually have an example that I'm going to walk through with you, so let's go to my computer. FMEA templates are done in a spreadsheet. Why? Because there's a lot of information that you're trying to collect. You can see as we look at my header row, which is in row two here, we have quite a bit. We have a lot of information we want to look at, and we also have some corrective actions. So what I want to do now is I want to show you an example and just give you a little bit of insight of how you would go about creating one of these. You would bring your team together, you would have a meeting, and you literally go line by line, and you address all the risks associated with it. Take note, do your risk identification first, and then you're going to go into your uh, correction act actions if you determine that that's a risk you want to do. You do not have to do every single risk. So in order for me to explain each section, let's actually look at what we would do first, part one. So we would have this column right here, column B, is you would have in your project a department, a function, a process, whatever that may be, depending upon what you're doing. And you break it up into chunks because you may have multiple risks within a particular function or a process or a department. For resources, I, you can see here, you may have five types of risks. So that's why you do that. It just helps really to chunk it out so that you're not overwhelmed with the amount of activities you have to do. And so the next column is column C, potential failure modes. What could go wrong? So for this particular example for resource, well, project resources are overloaded with daily work and other projects and team can't dedicate the proper time energy to getting work done. That's a common thing in a lot of organizations. Your next column, D, is the potential failure effect. What could happen if column C came to fruition? Well, timelines would be missed and project output not up to standards, creating issues for the project deliverable. Now this severity ranking right here, collectively as a team, we decided it was a five. But if you wanna know what that severity ranking is, uh, that rate is, let's go over here to this tab. It really is a simple ranking system from very high to none. And the severity rate for very high is a five. And this is where you discuss as a team, let's talk about, do we think it's a five, four, three, two or a one? There's no science to this. You're gonna kind of do a guesstimate on it and that's okay. You again are just giving yourself an idea as to what would be the severity if that would happen. Your next section or next column that you would then look at is potential causes of failure. So what is the potential cause for this failure to occur and to come to fruition? Well, in this particular example, executives and managers are not thinking of resource loading or understanding the bigger picture. They work in silo and just dump more with expectations of things getting done. This is actually a common problem in a lot of organizations. Now we then talk about the occurrence rate. And for our team, we said this was a five. So let's take a look at the occurrence rate. So the occurrence, uh, the probability of this occurring for like, let's say 90 to 100% is a five. If it's a high, we say 60 to 90, et cetera, till we say practically nil, very unlikely, which is a one. So in our particular example here, we said it was a five. This is a problem. It's a culture problem in the organizations that this happens all the time. So we're identifying it. And now the thing we are also going to identify, which is the next column, column H, current controls. What controls do we have in place to stop this? Well, unfortunately, none. 
Uh, we don't have anything to track resource activities and we have no controls to make sure that dumping doesn't occur. So our detection rate, which I'll go to this tab over here. Now this is where it's the opposite. If we have really good controls that we can detect things, then it's a one. But if we have virtually no controls that are going to detect the issue, then it's a five. So you can see for us, we said that our detection rate is a five. There is no way we're going to be able to guess when an executive or manager is going to be overloading somebody. Now this RPM, this here is a ranking oh sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna get you my definitions it is the risk priority number again it's a multiplication of the severity the occurrence and the detection which is going to give you the rpn number now when you get this i've color coded mine so that i have a certain range if it falls within a certain range it turns a red if it falls within another range it turns a, a yellow that just allows me when i have like 50 identified risks to really focus on the reds and yellows and to come up with corrective actions against it. And anything that is not color coded, I'd still look at it to see if we want to pull it into the risk mitigation plan. But again, I'm taking a risk by saying if this risk, for example, number five, because it has an RPN of 30, if it comes to fruition, I'm okay with it happening, right? Because at some point you can't plan for every single risk. It's almost impossible. Your whole project plan would then just be about risk mitigation. Now, once you've done this with your team and you figured out what you're going to do uh, for the next steps is what corrective actions are we going to put in place for the identified risks? Let's go to that section. So here we are, same template, and we've just really put together the mitigation plans for our resourcing and our faculty. And then we put some responsibility and due dates. We also have decided in some instances, if the risk should come to fruition, even though we've done our mitigation plan, we still, what is our plan to deal with that? And so we have that there too. And in some instances, you don't have a response plan because for the HVAC example, we're dealing with it by ensuring that we purchase the dehumidification uh, for our HVAC system. So this here is your FMEA. Um, it's a great, I usually do them in a brainstorming session, a half day or, or a full day workshop, depending on how big your project is. And you can just really knock this out uh, collectively as a team and just set people up, let them know what you're, they're gonna be looking at. And then you can just, as a team, start populating this. It really is a great way to ensure that your project is looking at all the other things that you did not maybe think about, but are definite risks. Now, don't forget to save your seat for my free webinar on really the five basics that you need to have an understanding for, for projects. It is so worth your time. Highly recommend it. Link is below this video. Definitely sign up. Make sure you watch this next video. If you still have questions on risk management, I explain it all here in more detail. On that note, please like this video, subscribe to this amazing community, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.